Hey friends, Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Welcome to episode 20 of A Friend to Knit With podcast. I can be found on Instagram as Leslie Friend. I am friend of friend on Ravelry and my blog name is A Friend to Knit With. Today is November 18th and it is a Thursday, a very dreary, cold Thursday. Perfect for knitting. Uh drinking tea or coffee and hunkering in. But I, after this, I'm going to go to the grocery store and try to get a lot of my things for next week. Because next week, if you live in America, it's Thanksgiving and all of the kids are coming home. I'm so excited. So I am going to try to get a lot of my grocery shopping done now. But I have not been on here since before Rhinebeck. And if you went to Rhinebeck, you know it is, was, always will be such an amazing weekend. I drove over with my friend Denise. We stayed with my sister, Lisa, and it was dreamy. She made us amazing meals. And yes, it was just a great weekend. You've probably heard from every other podcaster that all about Rhinebeck. Um, and... Yes, it did not disappoint. The day was great. I only went on Saturday. Next year, I plan on doing it a little bit differently. I just get very overwhelmed with yarn. So I need to have a plan and a project. And I didn't. And I wandered through. We wandered through all of the barns and the booths. But in the end, I didn't buy anything. Because truly, it was really all about the people anyhow. Saw some old friends that from the early blogging days, which is so fun. And then met a lot of new friends. So if we met, you know that I really am very grateful that we did. And next year too, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm very shy. So there were some people that I saw that I wish I would have introduced myself to and I didn't. So next year, I'll try to change that too and make more of my time there. Uh, we did, my friend Denise stood in line for the falafel sandwiches and that was great. Thank you, Denise. Well, I was chatting it up uh, and yes, the one thing too that I didn't get to do, I did not see Christy Glass anywhere and I totally forgot about her looking for her because I would have loved to have been in Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater. Um, but more than that, I would have loved to have my friend Denise be in that video. She was wearing the cutest sweater. I don't know if it was her very first sweater. I think, did she make another one? Might have been her very first sweater she ever knit. And it had a pocket. So I really wish she would have been in that. But I never saw Christy anywhere. And I just completely, it slipped my mind. So unfortunately, we did not get to see her. Um... But I did meet Kate and Kim and was very excited. They're from the Knitting Posse and they put together this knit along um, of Beth McDonald Stone knit along. I met Beth too, which was great. It was so great to meet everyone. Uh, and the knit along consisted of any Beth McDonald Stone pattern. I think it was September and October that you um, had to knit it. So. I chose the Creeping Fig. This is the Creeping Fig, and I adore this sweater. I am trying to be very mindful about what I make and what I fit into my wardrobe, and this is one of those sweaters that I will wear all the time. I've already worn it with a white blouse under it. I've worn it with a denim shirt under it, and I just think that it is, you know, one of those wardrobe staples. It's nice to have some special different ones in your wardrobe, but I love a good really, sweater that you could wear just a lot. And this is it. So I did make some modifications to it. Um, I 
had read on Ravelry that a lot of people had problems with the neckline being a little too tight. So I started at a size two on the neckline and then I um, decreased in the final rib row. I also did twisted rib to get back to the size one because this is a size one. I also, it's a boxy cropped cardigan, which drew my eye to it in the first place. I love the look of it. But when I was starting it and really thinking about my wardrobe, I decided to make it a little more fitted. So I put all of those modifications over on Ravelry and on my blog, but I just ended up decreasing instead of increasing under the arm to give it a more fitted look. And it's um, it's still a little boxy. I made it a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, that's the greatest thing about knitting. And I, you know, say this all the time, but you really can make it to fit your body. I was scared for many years not to do that. And I just usually knit exactly what the pattern said. But, you know, you, you know, if you don't wear a crop sweater, just make it longer. Or if you want a crop, make it cropped longer sleeves, whatever, you can make all of those modifications to fit your unique, lovely body. So this is also the twisted rib here and on the, on the bottom. And yeah, there's just enough little detail here in the, um, on the ragline. It's just a cable little, love it. I love the sweater. And I made it out of, hold on, let me see. It's, I think I have a, I think I brought one, but it's forged by Hudson and West. Here it is. And it's merino and wool. And like I said, I've worn it with a blouse underneath, but it feels great against your skin too. I'm a little sensitive to wool and I can't really wear anything rustic around my, on my body, directly on my skin. But I, this feels great. So this is it. It's forged by Hudson and West and this color is fawn. I think it took me about three and a quarter skeins. Um, yes, I think I use less because I are down the body. But anyhow, love this. Love the feel of the yarn. Um, and I um, have, I'm really, really trying to put in the effort to wear my knits. So this is the only thing I have off of the needles. Uh, this is an old knit back here. I brought that just because I, my Libby, um, my daughter Libby, she texted me last weekend and asked me if I could make her a Christmas sweater. She wants a red sweater for Christmas. So we looked a little bit on Ravelry and the one she found was on like five, size five needles. And, you know, I only have six weeks till Christmas. So I was did not think I would be able to get that done for her. Uh, so she remembered her hotline sweater. I made her a purple hotline sweater. This is mine, but hers was purple. She loves it. And so I ordered the yarn. It's a lipstick red. This is a wool in the gang pattern. The lipstick red is really a yummy red if you're looking for a good Christmas sweater. Uh, so that'll really only be my Christmas knit. I ordered the advent from Gina from Skein Cocaine, who I also met a right back, and which was great. I was gonna make, I was gonna knit every day. Um, she knit, a, she's knitting a fair aisle out of her advent colors, and I really wanted to do that, but I now I don't know if I'll have enough time. Plus, I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed with my knitting right now. Does anyone else get that, that way? I just have a lot of things on the needles that I want to get off of the needles. Um, and I'm gonna show you all of those. My mystery knit along is probably the one that I'm having the most difficulty with at the time. But first, before I start that, I wanted to tell you about um, a giveaway that Yarn Canada is putting together. It's for charity knitting. So if you knit for charities, bless you, that is so great. I should really be doing some of that uh, instead of making all these sweaters for myself. <laughs> but if you do that, how wonderful. And Yarn Canada thinks you're amazing too. And they are giving away $4,000 worth of yarn 
1,000 to American charity groups and $1,000 worth to Canada charity groups. And then 10 individuals, they're giving away $200 each. So if you are knitting for charities and you'd like to enter their contest, I will, or their giveaway, I will put the link below. Um, but it's an amazing giveaway. And yeah, you, you make the world a better place. So they want to reward you for that. So, and thank you for making the world a better place. Uh, I really do want to get into that. 2022, just even preemie caps or do they still use those? My mom used to knit preemie caps, so maybe I'll look into that. Okay, I'll show you what's on my needles. Um, all right, I'm going to start with my knit along that I, I have joined. This is the Loop It Up Cardi by Knit Collage. I am in love with this color. I think it's a color that works in my very neutral wardrobe. What do you think? It's just a... Um, little pop of fun, I think. Uh, these loops have been so much fun to make. And if you've never done, this is my only, my second knit collage knit along. I did last year's, I made the flower power for my daughter Libby. And now I'm making this for myself. I'm doing this with my friend Denise. So hopefully we'll be able to pop on soon and uh, show both of our loop it up cardigans, but there is a picture of it. And if you've never done one of these knit alongs, Amy Small makes it so much fun. She has videos to hold your hand the whole way. And she hosts Zoom meetings and has a yoga class. It just is a really great group knit along. Um, I can't say enough. The packaging when you get your kit is the detail that she pays attention to is off the charts. So thank you, Amy, for always doing. She's one of the people that I saw that I was too embarrassed to, too shy to meet. But um, look at how lovely this is. I adore it. So anyhow, I'm trying to go slower though. I just don't want it to be over and I have the sleeves to do. So I'm just kind of taking my time. This is not stressing me out at all because I know that, that I can probably finish those sleeves pretty quickly. And yes, but my other knits are taking a little bit longer. I am, I cast on a couple of weeks ago for the daily pullover, I was going to make another half and half triangles wrap, which I met those girls too. Caitlin and Jackie are so nice too. Um, so they hosted the half and half triangles wrap on the hill. I mean that it was a knit along, but they met up on the hill at Rhinebeck and that was really great. So I was gonna make another one and I was gonna do it out of kettle black. And this is nutmeg, fresh nutmeg. And mm, I was really dreaming about this half and half triangles wrap. However, I just, I think of sweaters are more my thing and I will wear them more. And the daily pullover, I cast on for that. And then I saw, then, they came out, they're doing a, okay, I should have done a little more research, but I, it's a, for the love of linen quill, I think knit along so you can make anything out of linen quill, or they might be doing a daily pullover knit along, but either or, both are great. Jackie knit one in like a pink, and then Caitlin has an amazing green, and then this is the kettle black. So I'll make another one out of the fresh nutmeg. And this is the kettle black. It's just a V-neck pullover. This is the size two. The only modification I've made so far is that I added length. So it wasn't so cropped. And I'm just going to do a full sleeve. I think it has a full sleeve. But, and you know, when you, um, 
I'm going to give away more pins, so stay tuned for that. But uh, if you have some of these pins and it makes it very easy to keep track of your decreases along the sleeve, if you just, this is uh, 10, 10 decreases every 13 rows. So I just take 10 pins and I, you know, string them together and then you can just put your pin in on your decrease row, especially on kettle black. If you're working with black, it's really hard to find. And this is not just a solid black, which would show easier than this yarn, but this yarn has all these different variations. So it's really hard to actually see the decrease. Yeah, I hope I haven't dropped the stitch because Lord knows I wouldn't even see it. Um, but you can just, it's hard to find the decrease. So you just put the pin in on your decrease row and then knit for 13 more rows and then do it again. So you don't have to always be looking for that um, decrease, right? But if you don't know about linen quill, the drape of this is so yummy. It's much different than the half and half drape. Um, I, don't, I love this. It's like a feather. Although the half and half triangles wrap is very light too, but this is like amazingly light and I think it'll be warm. It'll be a great layering piece. Um, but yes, it is 50% fine Highland wool, 35% alpaca, and just that 15% of linen. And it is yummy. I love this fresh and make color. So that is on my needles and that is really not giving me stress either. I love this because the um, it's pretty mindless after you get down to your separation. And it's the half, it's the mystery knit along that's giving me the stress. So if you don't know what it looks like, Nadine, uh, maybe you don't want to watch the rest of this. And if you were like me, I kept speeding forward to see what it would look like for some reason. I was ex very anxious to see what it would look like, but this is mine and I do adore it. I've loved working on it. I've loved everything about it. Uh, he has a lot of different things in here that I've never done. These little eye cord loops here. Um, these are called welts. Um, I'm on the brioche section right now. And then there's one more little section and then his final clue, which that's where I am at a stall because as soon as I saw that, I just, I just knew it wasn't gonna be something that fit into my wardrobe. And like I said, I wanna wear it. So I'm, um, kind of in a little bit of a situation where I might just bind off after clue three, or I might make a modification. There are a lot of different modifications on Ravelry that I saw that it definitely interests me. So I might go ahead and do one of those, but I'll keep you posted. But that definitely has been hanging over my, over my knitting head. Um, Cause I would love to get that off the needles. All right, I'm gonna tell you a little something about my life. Um, if you've noticed, I'm kind of lisping. I got Invisalign last week and they said you will lisp for a couple of weeks. I, uh, all I can do is giggle about it. Um, hopefully you weren't too bothered by it. I thought if I told you at the very beginning, you would notice the lisp, but they actually said if you read out loud or talk a lot, that it will get better, but you have something foreign in your mouth. And so it just, you know, causes you to lisp a little. And especially my name, when I was saying my name, Leslie, it's hard to say. Uh, so anyhow, I did get Invisalign. I sh should have them on for 10 months. If I wear them, you're supposed to wear them 22 hours a day. I consider taking them out while filming, but this takes me about an hour and you know, I have to eat too. So you have to take them out to eat. Has anyone else had Invisalign? My bite, I had braces when I was young, but my bite was a little off and some of my teeth have shifted. So to 
decided to just go for it because I've been talking about it for years. So going for it, I'm going to try my hardest to get these off in 10 months, which means you wear them a lot. The better you are at wearing them, the quicker they will come off. So yes. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. And because I am so grateful to you, if you'd like to make toast, I will give you that pattern for till next Thursday for Thanksgiving. Um, so that will be for free. You can enter thank you in the promo code because I am very thankful for you. So I hope everyone in America has a wonderful Thanksgiving. And if you're anyone where else, I hope that you have a wonderful time with your knitting and that you are knitting something you love. And if you're not, like I always say, chuck that. Should I do that with my mystery knit along? No, I actually am really enjoying it. It just, I need to make a change in it. So thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, take care.